Hello, my name is Chris England and I'm a technical representative on the manufacturing side at Man & Machine. Um, today we're going to look at Fusion 360 and see how we can publish a machine to our machine library using the machine builder. So I've got a model of a Mazak Variaxis i600 that I've just downloaded. I downloaded it in step file format and just brought it into Fusion 360. Um, I will give you a heads up that beforehand I did prep the model a little bit just by naming the axes and what's going to be static and um, what are the moving parts um, just in the assemblies just to make my life a bit easier. Uh, it's not necessary to do that, it's just it's helpful to identify which parts you want to do, uh, want to move or stay still. So I go into the manufacturing environment, I'm just going to close that window and what we do is we go to utilities and go to the machine builder. So I'm going to start by creating a new machine. So I'm going to select machine and it brings up my machine library. And if I have a look in my locals here, I can go and create a new one. I'm going to choose a million option. This is a five axis machine. So we'll give it a description. We'll call it a Mazak very axis. I 600 and I won't worry about filling out all the other details um, you can do them uh, it helps for the descriptions if you have multiple machines it might be useful for this case I'll just leave that I'm going to start by putting in the maximum workpiece sizes which I've got just from a spec sheet off the Mazak website so I've found with most machines it's pretty easy to find those sort of specs and um, those values so we'll do a maximum so it does have a workpiece diameter so I'm just going to go with 700 by 700 and we'll go with our maximum height of 450 right and then if I go and start on my um, kinematics I can then set up which how each axis works now it's not table for my X Y and Z so I'm just going to move those to the spindle and we can start specking those so for our X range we've got a range of 510 now it does start so we're going to say negative 510 for this one and from 0 that's fine home position 0 then on our Y our wire movement is 910 so we'll start at 0 uh, actually it needs to be negative 910 again because it's coming towards us um, as we can see on the view cube and then lastly on our Z which will be a minimum of uh, 510 so 510 there I just want to see that I didn't get confused on the wire 910 that's fine all the tens so then I'm going to add my rotary axes so I'm going to add in two rotaries an A and a C is what we need here if you do need to change it you can just click the corner drop down remember to change your orientation of your rotate as well so on our A for this it is limited so we're going to say negative 120 to 30 on the max which is fine and then we'll go to our um, C axis which I'm going to set to unlimited so that's fine for our kinematics uh, Let's just have a look through the other ones. The main one we want to do is we want to add a post processor to it just so that when we select this machine we don't have to select a post as well. I'm just going to take a default Mazak for this uh, particular machine setup. What do we have? Mazak. Let's go with the generic one for now. That's fine. So I've got that. We'll hit OK. And now my machine is ready. I'm going to select that and we can start building now there is a move components button um, if you need to move anything into place or straighten anything if the, the models misaligned also making sure that our model is orientated with the Z position being up and orientated uh, in the way that our machine would work so our X running across the machine and our Y running into it so with our model already coordinated in this case we can then just skip straight to the setup machine model so the first two selections we have to attach points to is just where our tool will attach so we'll go to our spindle and attach it there and our part 
and normally I just go for the center of my my um, workpiece so there we go all right then we go for the static components now this is where it comes in handy for me having named it beforehand so we've got a static all the statics I've labeled I'm just going to select them it's the components that don't move it's fine and then my X I've got an X axis over here select our x-axis and then we can go ahead and select the others so the y I've got two y axes or two components anyway one y axis and then in my z I'll select my z axis movement or the a axis we've got the whole trunnion so we'll select those three components selecting all of that uh, I'm not going to add a rotation point because it should work without it in this case, but you can select a rotation point for that. In this case, the geometry is actually not rounded, so we don't have a nice rounded edge to select. That's why I'm going to chance it without it, but as long as the machine works fine, we'll be okay. Uh, my palette, so choose my palette there for the C and then the rotation point on the center for that axis. Right, so if I say okay, we can now start to test so if we have a look and i should have maybe switched the door off but i suppose we can look from the top perhaps if we move in the x we've got our x movement our y movement and our z movement it's fine all right so having a look on the inside there's the z coming down to roughly where we'd expect Y all the way to the front. So the range of movement we have there, and the X from side to side, covering the whole bed. Perfect. So if we then wanted to see, uh, we'll just set it all back to home there, and we can then go and check our rotate rotary axis, our A on our table firstly, our trunnion, and that's already moving in the correct direction, so that's fine. Let's just make sure it's not doing anything funny on the wall. Looks like it's picked up the center just fine and our C axis. Right, so with all of that finished, we can then go ahead and um, finish here, which saves that to our library. When we say yes, that machine will then be available. So, perfect. Right, so the machine does stay in your saved folder. And it does reference that machine, so remember that it is important to keep your machines in a neat location. Um, I'm just going to pause for a second while I set up a part to test on. Right, so I have a very simple part. It's one of the tutorial parts that we have in the in the library, um, or as our standard project uh, folders allow, so the CAM samples. And I'm going to quickly set this up using my machine so firstly I'm going to edit the setup and I'm going to choose a machine and choose that new machine I just made so it's named itself custom million so they didn't give it a name um, there we go and now it's brought in the machine which is great we'll hit OK the setup is already there and I'm just going to take this uh, facing operation here and pattern it Add to new pattern and we will do a circular pattern select our center axis which we'll probably need our origins let's try the Z go and we'll go with four great so with that we can then go and simulate now we need to use a different simulate because we've got simulate with machine you can also get that from right clicking and saying simulate with machine or else it won't show the machine in the simulation another thing to just point out that when you are simulating with the machine you should put your view to the tool not to the um, to the model or the machine base the machine base should work fine Go, and we can see our machine now the animation doesn't actually rotate unfortunately on the on the machine bed on the workpiece but you can see it moving around as it goes 
with the rotation. Now if I started that off with a um, facing operation on the top, we'll just set it just to that. that right on the top to form our pattern. Try again, we should see the the trunnion turning as well. So if I hit play, you can see it's starting on the top. Oh, I've used a end mill. But that's okay. Yeah, that's right, so that's how you set up a machine in Fusion 360 if you've got your machine model and you um, need to set it up from scratch. Thank you for watching. Bye.